Welcome to the GI Endoscopy Author Interview Series. My name is Professor Ian Grelnick. I am from Rambam Medical Center in Haifa, Israel, and I am also the Senior Associate Editor for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. I am joined today by Dr. Mohamed Aloubedi. He is an Associate Professor of Medicine and Pathology and is also the Director of the Endoscopic Ultrasound Program at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Welcome, Dr. Alabedi. It's a pleasure to have you here today. We're going to be discussing his paper entitled, A Large Single Center Experience of Endoscopic Ultrasound Guided Fine Needle Aspiration of the Left and Right Adrenal Glands, Diagnostic Utility and Impact on Patient Management. Uh, very interesting paper. Congratulations for uh, having this published. Um, tell us a little bit about, about this study and how you conceived it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Grelnik, for the opportunity to be here, and uh, I'm very thrilled that this paper is accepted by gastrointestinal endoscopy. Um, I think uh, uh, endoscopic ultrasonography, uh, particularly fine needle aspiration approach of it, has really um, uh, expanded the horizon of what we do as gastroenterologists, and this is a great example of where this technology was able to make an impact. Uh, in terms of caring for patients for gastrointestinal malignancy as well as mediastinal uh, uh, staging for lung cancer. Uh, this particular paper reflects our collaboration with, uh, with our thoracic surgeons and uh, uh, surgical oncologists at the, at the University of Alabama in Birmingham. Um, um, we uh, do a lot of work in uh, lung cancer staging and evaluating the left adrenal and the right adrenal by endoscopic ultrasonography is part of completing the staging for lung cancer and other malignancies uh, for that uh, 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 purpose. Um, uh, so this we collected our data prospectively uh, for those patients who were referred with either an abnormal CAT scan or uh, abnormal PET scan. And as you know, it's very important to uh, know whether this particular patient has an inflammatory type lesion based on the PET scan, uh, enlargement on the CAT scan, and to know whether this is malignant uh, because this particular patient will have stage four disease and they will not be amenable to any sort of uh, um, um, surgical intervention. However- so, so it's really important here because you're able to actually impact patient management and potential outcomes of the patient. Exactly, and, and uh, historically, um, this uh, have been approached by the either the CT-guided approach, which is still useful in the places where they do it proficiently, uh, or uh, uh, by surgery. Um, and I think we have here at our disposal uh, uh, a technique that is an outpatient procedure done under conscious sedation with really minimal, if any, complications, even though you think we're crossing the uh, GI wall by a fine needle, uh, that could lead to perforation, infection, et cetera. But in our hands and our experience and many other centers, uh, this is a very, very uh, safe procedure and it's highly effective. And it takes a patient from suspected to have stage four disease to proving that they have uh, stage four disease. The other thing we do that's useful at our center we have on-site uh, cytopathology interpretation. So the patient comes, an hour later I'm able to tell them whether this adrenal is benign or malignant, and from there on we can make the appropriate referral to the treating physician. Uh, in addition, uh, some of these patients are scheduled for a next day surgery or mediastinoscopy. They are booked and based on these results we can tell them or tell the surgeon that this biopsy was benign, they go on to get expedient healthcare rather than wait another week to get the results or wait two weeks till we find out what happened to the biopsy. So I think um, efficiency, proficiency, as well as uh, immediate results available to us and to the patient more importantly. Your, your cytopathologist is actually in the room and part of the procedure at the time of the endoscopic ultrasound? Yes, we, when I developed the program uh, in 2000 at the University of Alabama, we had a joint collaboration where we had an agreement for every final aspiration they come. They typically have also, it's a teaching service, we have the resident, a fellow, and an attending physician. We give them a sample and they study it. They stain it on site. Uh, they are actually, uh, five minutes later, they tell me, you've got tissue, it's adequate. Second, it looks malignant. And basically, if we have a history of someone with lung cancer, either proven or suspected, 
then they look at the slide, the slide, uh, the cells look malignant, then they can tell you you're dealing with a stage uh, for lung cancer. Uh, we know that this is an issue for other uh, medical uh, centers where their pathologists either don't believe that they need to come or uh, time management issues, since it sometimes can be time demanding on their, on, on their time. Uh, we're working right now on uh, a project. I know we're diverting a little bit, but it's important to mention. Uh, it's called telecytopathology, mm -hmm. where you can project those slides, images, through the internet to the pathologist office where they can uh, uh, look at them in their office. And we're trying to do a study where we are comparing uh, agreement between on-site cytopathology versus the pathologist in their office. And this way, centers who don't have that luxury, I would call it luxury because I think it is, uh, to be able to communicate with you regarding this particular uh, uh, procedure without them coming on site physically to your room. So I think that's going to be exciting to study further. So in this particular study, tell us a little bit about what, what the findings were, what the results were. Uh, again, there is a, an element of referral bias, which I think for this uh, purpose is okay, but we are taking a group of patients who have abnormality on CAT scan or a PET scan. And you need to know what this abnormality is. So among this cohort, about 37% uh, of 59 patients end up having malignant involvement in their either right or left adrenal. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the majority of these uh, went on to get treatment. A minority refused treatment when they have stage four lung cancer, but the majority had uh, chemotherapy and did not undergo any further surgical procedures or any CT guided biopsy for that matter. So, so they, you actually avoided more invasive uh, therapy because it was not warranted and they received palliative chemotherapy. Absolutely. And more importantly also, the group that had benign, I am not aware to date of any false negative, meaning if we have adequate adrenal tissue that and reflects benign uh, adrenal gland, uh, the majority of these patients or all of them uh, uh, underwent subsequently uh, the necessary either further th uh, surgical staging of the mediastinum or uh, treatment if the, pay if the, let's say, the mass was locally invasive. But we know they did not have metastatic disease, so they were approached systematically afterwards that this is a benign lesion in the adrenal and they proceeded on to have other mediastinoscopy or other treatment based on the primary tumor. Okay. Let me ask you a technical question because when I read your paper, I, I, I thought about this. Tell me the difference between the technical approaches to left adrenal versus right adrenal, ease of, of the technical aspects that an uh, ultrasonographer would need to have. Yes, I think uh, it's a very important point because when I was in training, which was not a long time ago, uh, in 1999, 2000, we felt that the right adrenal cannot be seen uh, as frequently. This is particularly for the benign or normal adrenal gland. Uh, it's, we see the left adrenal in about 98% of the times um, uh, uh, from the gastric or the, f uh, the fundus of the stomach. Uh, very easy. We described in our original work a systematic way of finding the left adrenal. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, well documented in the literature in our work uh, done previously. The right adrenal, we were told, is a target that probably we should not approach, not because of the danger, but because we, we can't see it from the duodenal approach. And uh, that's true because the lesion is behind the IVC. And with a little maneuvering, sometimes you are able to uh, uh, put the lesion in position that you are able to pass a needle safely without puncturing the portal vein. While there are some reports uh, suggesting you could do that, I do not recommend or I do not advocate to go through a vessel to reach a target lesion. Yeah, that would I not think, be a good thing. <laughs> no, not necessarily. Um, but the data is limited with the right adrenal, but the take home message is, uh, if there is an enlargement of the right adrenal that appears to be amenable through the duodenum, I think we should give it a try. Particularly the majority of the right adrenal lesions uh, you have to cross the liver, you have to cross other organs via the CT guided approach. Most of these patients were either could not be done by CT guided approach or they felt they have to cross the liver to reach the adrenal to document malignant involvement. Um, I think um, for both left and right adrenal lesions, they are treated like any other organ. We do final aspiration. Uh, once you know there's not an intervening vessel, uh, once you also very importantly, you rule out that the patient had a phagochromocytoma by doing the appropriate lab work, 
uh, particular if the history is suggestive. Uh, this should be a very easy uh, uh, procedure to do, very safe, and it is something that everybody should be able to do, uh, uh, people who have the basic fundamental knowledge in ultrasonography, and they do good finding the aspiration. Okay, well listen, thank you again for being here. Congratulations on the paper. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you very much, Ian.